Hi there and welcome to a new episode of Behind the Lens with me, Paul. Aha. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm quite, you know, today's episode will be really about things that I really like. That's kind of a lens review. And in this episode for the Lumix cameras, I'm going to present you, in my opinion, with two of the best lenses you can get for little money. Yeah, so for little money, I mean, the uh, cost when you buy them new is below $250. And... Uh, they pretty much are bang for their buck yeah so i've chosen one prime lens yeah and i've chosen one uh, focus lens as i call them yeah <laughs> telephoto lens that you can really use yeah important to know with micro four third lenses is that they have a crop factor of two so if you uh, have a 20 millimeter micro four third lens in full frame it will be 40 millimeters equivalent of the focal length while in um, APC, so Sony cameras, for instance, uh, it will be 30 millimeters because they've got a times 1.5, but that's just a little thing. Yeah, for prime lenses, yeah, uh, I basically had here three lined up, which I have right in front of me. The first one I have, this is the Olympus 45 millimeters, 1.8, I think it is, yeah. 1.8 and this is an absolutely fantastic lens it really is it's very sharp uh, it's very good for portrait photography uh, it's good for sports photography because it's sharp and because of the uh, one point the f 1.8 you can also use it into low light so you can do during the evenings yeah you can also pretty much shoot very dis uh, decent and sharp pictures but unfortunately it's a bit too expensive yeah so this one is not the prime budget lens that we're really looking for the second is the 20 millimeters uh, panasonic lens 1.7 aperture um, which is 269 euros new but more neuros neuros no euros <laughs> uh, new which um, is you know come on 19 euros above budget it's not about the budget it's the fact that this lens for photography is actually very good yeah some of you might think actually hey 20 millimeters i can run my uh, youtube channel or vlog on it you could if only one thing this lens is quite noisy well once it starts focusing or refocusing you will hear the blades and you'll also hear, hear this on your uh, audio there's no way of escaping it somehow it picks it up which is a bit of a of a shame yeah, so because it is decent, but I would never use it for a video. I would purely use it for photography. And with that said, we come to my recommendation of probably the best budget prime lens that Lumix has to offer, which is 25 millimeters lens. Now they've got two different versions. Yeah, this is the 1.7, the 25 millimeter 1.7 I'm talking about, which goes for about 150 euros. Yeah. Now, you also have a 1.4, but that's about three or four times the price point. Truth be told, that does give you better picture quality. But as you see here, a bunch of pictures are now sliding by. I have no problem with this lens because I really think that it presents great value for money. Yeah, for 150 euros, you get a prime lens, which A, autofocuses, has the focal length of... Uh, 50 millimeters full full frame or 35 millimeters on APC, yeah, which is pretty great already. Yeah, the autofocus on this, and that's where one of the issues comes specifically when you go uh, um, filming, yeah, is it hunts. It can hunt terribly. If you look at the picture quality, you'll see a few here passing by again. It is very good, specifically for portrait photography. I would definitely recommend this. You can do some, yeah, not macro photography because that's where, you know, you simply miss the sharpness, even if you enlarge it. But, you know, you can take some decent nature portraits or whatever you want to do. You can do some decent landscapes. You can do some decent city photography. This is not razor sharp, as you can see, but it is very acceptable. And for this kind of money, it's very good for photography. For videography, then you would really have to go more manual in terms of manual focus. The ring itself is actually very smooth. Yeah, but you, if you have a camera without any 
kind of image stabilization because this comes without image stabilization as well that's where you might go wrong yeah so that's so that's very important to keep into mind that this will focus hunt also when you for instance do a stationary uh youtube channel like i now do it will focus hunt now within your lumix camera you can go into your auto focus well in your uh, the way that you focus yeah you can pretty much determine what you want to it's very intuitive but you have to have the focus area much enlarged you'll still have some focus hunting but to an acceptable degree but if you're really looking for something with razor sharp autofocus yeah quickly yeah no, this is not it but i also have to be honest uh, lumix cameras in general have 49 autofocus points yeah yeah compared to let's say the modern sony's uh, which have about somewhere from two to 400 depending on what you really have so i would say go for this 25 millimeters if you however have a bit more money to burn and you don't mind paying a bit more yeah um then i would go for the 45 when you're a photographer yeah if you're really into photography go for the 45 millimeters but it's far more expensive yeah also keep in keep in mind in the back of your mind that it's a 45 millimeters yeah so your wideness is not that much if you go up close yeah so if you want to use it for interview shooting it can do a good job but you'll be at a meter to two meters distance minimal to get a decent sharp image photography wise it's fantastic though yeah so that's that's the prime lenses yeah when we go into the um, <clears throat> Focal, focus lenses yeah and it's the 45 150 panasonic which goes for about 250 euros which you can basically buy anywhere and it comes with image stabilization as you see here in red yeah and this actually is a lens for this type of money guys and you'll see some examples here yeah i'm pretty much into sports photography so i predominantly focus on cycling running maybe a bit of soccer at at times yeah events the range here is in starting 90 millimeters full frame all the way up to 300 yeah you get that for 250 euros but i see now that these things are going on sales for somewhere between 150 and 200 euros so you really get a decent lens yeah one of the great things in in this lens is it's got image stabilization which is great the downside here is that the maximum f-stop yeah is uh 4.0 which means is that you can on one hand during daylight you can pretty much get a decent image yeah as you can see a few of the uh, cyclists here going by yeah uh, once you go closer to dusk it really becomes more of a of a problem you definitely see um, that the f-stop doesn't really support that kind of uh, of uh, shooting yeah, I also have to admit, when I started using this for the first time to do some photography on uh, cyclers, yeah, road cyclers in specific, yeah, it really taught me a lot about photography. So if you, if you use this lens, I normally use it on the uh, photo burst mode. Yeah, um, the uh, G7 that I'm using has, I think, up to nine frames per second which is pretty okay it is not as you know fast as for instance the uh, sony cameras but one of the things here is you get a decent quality image out of this you don't get razor sharp uh, images where you're like oh my god you know you see a little sweat drop from 20 meters on somebody's face no you really don't get that but you get very acceptable quality yeah and for the price point here it comes with image stabilization which itself is pretty oh, awesome it for let's say somewhere between 150 and 250 euros i'd say this is probably the best you can get for that kind of money there's very is the 12 60 kit lens again this is a similar principle yeah it also comes with image it comes with image stabilization yeah. and that makes you know this is maybe doesn't have the same depth of field as uh, or the focal length as the 45 150 but it definitely is a very good alternative 
it's uh, first of all the great thing here is is that it's got an aperture of 3.5 yeah so it does allow you a bit more sharpness um, a bit more isolation of your subjects but if you want to buy this new this goes for roughly 300 euros as well yeah so if you get it as a kit lens don't just throw it away because it is pretty good specifically uh, the fact that you can do uh, 12 millimeters and you have a pretty good uh, vlogging um, setup yeah and you can extend it all the way to 60 millimeters so i would say the image quality on this is slightly sharper than that of the 45 150 if you compare it to the 25 millimeters um, prime lens i would say that's that's a bit sharper but uh, all in all, we're really talking here about the budget lenses. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this, uh, this little episode. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask me. And most of the uh, people I see tend to scream, sub uh, subscribe, ring the bell and all this kind of stuff. I like it when you subscribe, but I like it more when you ask questions. Yeah? Because that also makes me think a bit. And sometimes I'm, you know, coming to the conclusion that, uh, ooh, I made some mistakes in my uh, in my episode or I'm thinking hmm, I never really thought about that let's have a little investigation on it now this here now uh, in total before editing was a 14 minute episode I'll try to shorten up as much as I can and my uh, Sony a6400 has a new record in 14 minutes it drains 70% of its battery when you film on 4k in manual mode now that must be a record and with that, guys, see you next time.